Welcome back to Taronga TV. Now this is a real exclusive. We are with Dr. Carrie Rose and she is in charge of the Australian Registry of Wildlife Health. This is a fantastic laboratory. You don't get to see this normally from outside in the zoo. You might have come to the Taronga Institute of Science and Learning, which is where we're sitting now. Carrie, can you explain to us what you do and what this is all about? Oh, thanks Hayden, I'd love to. So at the registry, we have a fantastic role. It's a really unique applied science role. So it's just fascinating to bring you and all the Taronga TV people with you. Uh, so we have a very fortunate position. We provide a diagnostic service for free ranging wildlife. So the main people we do that for are both the state and the Commonwealth Environment Department. So when they're out there managing wildlife, they come up with questions. Why are these animals sick? Where did they go? What happened to them? And they would bring you a sample or something yeah, like that absolutely. and then leave it to you to come up with a... Come up with a diagnosis <laughs> yeah. and sometimes that can be a little bit stressful because yeah. it, you know, animals and animal management and wildlife populations depend on it, but it's just a fascinating role. So can you give us an example of something that may have happened out in the wild that's come to you recently? Yes, we're very fortunate. We have things brought to us by wildlife carers, by veterinarians, by rangers from all across the country, but predominantly in New South Wales. And uh, some of the work we do is with the Commonwealth Environment Department on remote uh, federally managed parks like Christmas Island, Cocos Island, Norfolk, Uluru, Kakadu, uh, Boudiri National Parks. And recently, in the last couple of years, we had a uh, bacterial infection in some reptiles on Christmas Island and we couldn't figure out what it was and that's because it's brand new. So when we come up with something totally new, there are no diagnostic tests. We have to go back to first principles and figure out what that might be. We're very fortunate that we've got a PhD student, Jess Edge, Yes. She's taken it on as a research project so that we've identified it's absolutely new. She's trying to learn more about it, try and figure out what the impacts are. But sadly, in that period of time, we've seen it streak across the island into four different species of reptiles Goodness. and uh, and causing pretty much a uniformly fatal infection in those species. So it's absolutely vital that we get the word out and we improve biosecurity so that uh, accidentally we bring that um, that organism back to the mainland of Australia because we have a huge biodiversity of reptiles all across Australia and in most of the environments across our country reptiles are the biggest vertebrate biomass so we need to protect them and we need to make sure that whatever that is on Christmas Island it stays there uh, and doesn't further threaten mainland populations of reptiles. S so is the the Bellinger River turtle a good mm. example of that? It absolutely is. Uh, so we were very fortunate to lead that diagnostic investigation. There were some very astute young men who were paddling along the Bellingen River, just along the New South Wales Queensland border, and they came across a pool with 53 sick and dying turtles. Obviously that's not normal. They were really astute. They called both the environment and the agriculture departments, and within about 24 hours we were able to examine 20 animals. And even though it took us weeks to come up with a final diagnosis of mm. what was going on, within a few hours we were able to examine those turtles and say it's not toxic, it's infectious. We don't know what the infectious agent is now, but institute biosecurity, treat this as a highly infectious organism. Uh, and that was fantastic. So the community, the environment department, the agriculture department instantly set up uh, quarantine zones and conducted an investigation all up and down the river to find out how extensive it was uh, and to track how many animals were left after the outbreak rolled through. They were also very astute to bring the last animals from the last pond into Taronga uh, and other facilities before the virus went through. So this is a huge collaboration with a lot of organisations mm, for this absolutely. species. And we've got a lot going on here right now, Carrie, haven't we? As we speak, mm. there's baby little Bellingen River turtles growing rapidly that will eventually go back into the water with some of our super keepers here. And, and as I said, a lot of collaboration outside of Taronga. It's a great example of how zoos can manage and help and assist animals for the wild, which is what we do here at Taronga. And this species, this Bellingen River turtle, beautiful little turtle, is a great example of success stories. Into our care, bred up into healthy populations in our care and then released back into the river system and are thriving at the moment, aren't they? Absolutely, absolutely. Now, we're sitting in front of, like, this is a fantastic looking place. Uh, yes. Incredible, lots of beautiful microscopes. When did you get your first microscope? Ah, oh, I got my first microscope for Christmas when I was about 10 years old. 
And so it was just absolutely brilliant. And chatting with some friends at a conference recently, we just all talked about when we got our first microscope. So it's a little that bit seems like to be a pivotal moment when you're growing up and you get your first microscope, even if it's just a little tiny toy. That tiny little thing you got given in the kit, in the polystyrene and oh, all the mine slides. Oh, beautiful wooden box, which my son oh, has nice. now. And nice. Yeah, I found it before Christmas and I took it down from the cupboard and called my friends around and we all played with it and then put it back. <laughs> so you got it in the wooden box. I got it in polystyrene. <laughs> Mine was a little bit of a cheaper version. But yeah, anyway. I had the little brine shrimp on <laughs> those glass right. slides and I was poking my finger to get Beautiful. my first blood sample. Beautiful. Yeah, it's absolutely brilliant to introduce children to science. So can you give us a little bit of a rundown of what we're sitting with here? Because there's some extraordinary equipment in here that's definitely not... Uh, in the in the wooden box or the polystyrene this is this is top top drawer that's right at Taronga Institute of Science and Learning we're very fortunate to be incredibly well equipped and a lot of that has come through donations and grants from granting agencies for some of the research that we do so what we have here is a multi-header microscope for teaching purposes so that we can take all of this mass of resources from looking at wildlife health for the last 35 years and make it available so we try to make sure we've got students coming through that we run educational programs and that we power research predominantly at the graduate level. Um, but using these tools, so we have a multi-header microscope now. We're so you can have your students looking at here as you're talking. At, Absolutely. Great, isn't it? And we can also do high definition broadcasting through our web conferencing software called Blue Jeans that the mm -hmm. zoo has. And that allows us to communicate because so this is a very visual science. Mm. And in order for us to inform other diagnosticians around the country and around the world about what we're seeing emerge right now from wildlife, we need to show them. Yeah. So we need to capture images and we need to share those on web conferences, through publications, conferences, um, absolutely every form of communication we can. If you're a budding scientist, Carrie was a budding scientist when she got her first little microscope and look at her now. She's running this incredible show here. She's got an amazing team too, Jane and oh, Hannah brilliant. out there doing great work right brilliant. now. Can I show you this microscope? Please. This is absolutely my it's pride. Under covers. This is my pride and joy. Wow. So this is a microscope that scans. So we can put a glass microscope on here. It's got a motorized stage. It will scan the microscopic image at multiple different planes so that we can take it onto a computer, share it again around the world, and anybody can use their computer like a microscope and focus up and down through it, put little notes and highlights and all sorts of things on it, on the image, again for research, education, it's increasing beautiful. awareness. It's, it's a beautiful, a beast. It's a beautiful thing. One of the things I really want to share is that this goes on behind the scenes at Taronga. A lot of people don't even know about it, and that's what I love about Taronga TV. We can meet mm. people like you, you can show us what goes on and how much work goes into protecting wildlife around Australia and around the world. When you come up with a slide and you make it, you go old school, it's like the cover slip on top of the slide and everything. Oh, yes, um, we do. But how, you've told me there's some incredible number of samples you've got in <laughs> the freezer. Ah, oh, yes, so we're very fortunate. We've got samples representing wildlife health and disease going back to the 1960s and even earlier. And that really helps us because if we're faced with something like a while back with the Tasmanian Devil Facial Tumor Disease, our role in that was going through the registry and saying that is totally new. We've never mm. seen any kind of tumor like that. And we can say that because we have all of these samples from wildlife all across Australia. So we have a series of formal and fixed tissues we, that are embedded in paraffin. Can I have a look? Yeah, absolutely. And we've got absolutely thousands of these. So, so that's that's set, set So those in are animal tissues that have been fixed in formalin, so okay. they're inert and they're embedded in paraffin. So you'll take a tiny, tiny sliver of that and Absolutely. lay that on a microscope on a slide. That's right. So it gets a ribbon of these tiny little slices gets uh, set out over a little pool of water, and we get a glass microscope slide, and we pick it up off of the pool of water, melt away the wax, stain it put on a cover slip and then we get a chance to have a really good look at the architecture at each of the tissues that we've had a look at. So what are we looking at here? Well, yeah, so if we have a look, we've got a bit of heart of a bird, we've got some lung tissue and we have some spleen. So we try to 
maximize our value by putting quite a few tissues on yeah, each slide. Yeah. So we can have a look. If you're getting inspired by watching this, you can always <laughs> ask questions about the Taronga Institute of Science and Learning as well. I love Ooh. it because there's people like you that inspire young scientists out there. They might have their first microscope ah, in their absolutely. room, be doing their first slides. I remember I think I did my first one was a feather and a hair and you said <laughs> you picked brilliant. yourself actually. Pond water is yeah. the best stuff. Yeah, right. So we're very fortunate. We've got a mobile veterinary clinic and a mobile laboratory. And if you come by the Institute and we're not here, it's because we're out in the field. So we're very fortunate to get to go out to collect some of our own samples. And then we have lots of things that come here. And then we get to also do some laboratory investigations, find out what's going on. So we would look at these tissues under the microscope to try to find out if there's inflammation, if there's evidence of toxic change, if there's evidence of any tumor formation, try to find the general process that's going on. And then once we've narrowed it down, we can take some of the tissues that we have in the freezers, uh, which we've got tissues going back to 1998 that live at minus 80 degrees in some of our freezer banks. And we can pull those out and we can either do viral culture, bacterial culture, toxicology. Right now we're working with the medical school at the University of Sydney, uh, Professor Eddie Holmes, and we can run a metatranscriptomic approach where we sequence all the what? RNA in the sample. What, just get you to translate that for us? Yeah, so what we're looking at is all of the genetic material in the sample. So we exclude the host DNA and we're looking at all of the RNA, which will let us know what bacteria viruses and parasites live in there. So our diagnostic capabilities, since we've been partnering uh, with Professor Holmes, have just gone absolutely through the roof. And we've been able to take these tissues that we've been saying, saving since 1998, where we knew we had something new, but it didn't grow in culture. Only about three to 5% of known viruses and bacteria grow in culture. So we've got a lot to learn coming mm. out of that freezer. Mm. And we've been so successful in coming up going back into the registry through the glass slides, through the paraffin blocks and through those frozen tissues and identifying new bacteria that were never thought to be in the Southern Hemisphere, but that are, have the potential to cause population level changes in wildlife and also have the potential to threaten human health. Wow. It's long mm. science, isn't it? It's long-term science. Yeah, it's like, that's, that's why right. you, having those samples from such a long time ago, if you didn't have them, it would make life you a lot You have no longer. context. Yeah. You have no idea what's normal, what's not normal with the Bellingen River turtles. No one had ever looked at a Bellinger River turtle before. We didn't know what parasites were normal. So it's really difficult to know what's causing the outbreak if you don't have this back catalogue. When you have it, it just allows you to instantly put context around what you're looking at. I can feel a registry series coming on. I think this is the first episode sharing with you another little hidden gem behind the scenes of what goes on at Taronga. Carrie, thank you so much. It's Thanks, amazing Amy. to talk to you. And I think I'm, I'm talking for myself, but I'm sure there's a lot of people watching as well that would love to know more. And maybe we could see what Hannah and Jane get up to. Maybe we could also talk to you about, because you go out and collect samples from strandings and whales and all these different things. So there's amazing stories to come from mm. us here on Taronga TV. Thanks for having us. Please come back and join us again. We'd love to. You never know what's around the next corner. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks, Carrie.